Hi gang, this is Jonathan at the Piano Lesson, and uh, I don't really have any great bits of wisdom necessarily to, to share just this very second, but uh, I'm going to play a little bit, and uh, if something comes to mind, I will share it with you. So, here we go. So there's a there's a tune. There's one of my favorite tunes on Green Dolphin Street from the movie. On Green Dolphin Street. If you've ever seen the movie, it's a dreadful movie. Don't bother watching it. I went through a small period where I thought, gosh, you know, a lot of these songs are from movies. I should watch the movies. Bad idea. <laughs> a lot of those movies were not the greatest. So don't feel guilty if you don't know the movie. But uh, it's kind of that's kind of a fun tune because it, it again it's another one of these uh, 32 bar 
tunes, uh, you have this, what's called a pedal tone. So the pedal tone, you have this repeated note in the bass, and the chord changes on top, C major 7, minor 7, D major. These, these polychords, which are kind of fun. Right? And uh, 2, 5, 1, and C, and 2, 5, 1, and E flat. Unusual, kind of unusual. A lot of tunes, well, most tunes modulate briefly. That one modulates to E flat, but very, very, very briefly. But it goes up a minor third. Not the most common thing. And then uh, another 16 bars, so 16 and 16. Goes to the relative minor, A minor. It's pretty predictable, pretty common. Uh, I have some of my own chord changes that I use. I kind of step down like that, um, going down in, in the bass. Uh, and uh, I like the idea, um, I like the idea that it goes kind of from major to another major key and then minor and then back to the, the major key again. It's kind of fun. Um, thought I'd talk about uh, a little bit also about technique a bit. We, we haven't talked a whole lot about piano technique. Uh, so technique being uh, how you use your body when you play the piano. And um, it's really hard to explain technique outside of something that uh, a, a practical musical thing um, just talking about but I, I can talk about some general principles that I adhere to um, one of the things that uh, I make try to make sure is and probably heard a lot of old time and teachers talk about this but keeping your weight down you know a pianist creates sound with weight so the weight of their body all right it's kind of, and some people call it a transfer of weight. So I'm right now I'm taking the weight of my arm, I'm transferring it along the keyboard in what's called a glissando. The trick is, though, to take that weight and distribute it not just on a big forearm, right, but to focus it behind fingers, right, so that you can direct it, you know, direct that weight. And rather than lifting the weight constantly with the arm, uh, so I try to keep the arm and the wrist low. Uh, another practical reason to keep the wrist low, other than to keep the arm weight down, is also to keep the fingers out of the key. You know, if your wrist is up, okay, it, it's a little harder to get your fingers out of the key. Now, there's no hard and fast rules. I'm one of my favorite pianists in the whole world, Earl Garner. He played real high up on the piano and sit up with phone books and he played kind of like this. Uh, and he was, you know, fantastic, right? Uh, Again, the only one of the disadvantages as well is that if you're playing with your hands like this all the time, well, then it's hard to harder in some respects to use that weight. But I try to keep the weight down in general, low wrist, focusing that weight behind the fingertip. Um, you might think of it uh, as doing a push up, okay, doing a push up on your fingertips. So you you are kind of controlling, you're controlling that weight and you're transferring it again, the word transfer, you're transferring it from finger to finger while while the weight is down. I used to do exercises uh, where I would take one finger or set of fingers, let's say, push them against the keys, partly to stretch this area of the hand, and then re repeat, let's say, I'll just take this finger as an example, just to kind of the word is toss, to kind of toss the finger towards the key, to sort of learn independence. You could even, you could take, you know, your, your middle finger. It's a little, it's a little tricky, you know. Um, I'll, I'll try to get another viewpoint for you, but, you know, kind of, let's just say I could do it with, I'll try to do it with my, my middle finger, but like kind of taking that and sort of learning to develop what uh, pianists like to call independence, okay. Um, that that can be very helpful. Another uh, important aspect of piano technique is maintaining a firmness right here, um, and that's called the bridge. It's 
kind of where you get your strength from. And this is where the activity comes from. You can keep your arm, keep your arm very quiet, but like a little bird flapping. Uh, again, I'm not using the weight of the finger per se, right? But I'm, I'm focusing the weight of, of more along the lines of the hand and the forearm and probably the upper arm to some extent behind the finger. You know, if you put too much weight behind your finger, then you break your finger, okay? And if you don't put enough, then the key won't go down. So somewhere in there is reality. But you create tone using weight, the weight of your arm, and you also create tone based on the speed of the strike, right? So you can go more slowly or, or more quickly. And part of that also is dependent upon what part of the finger you're using. If you're using a bonier part as opposed to a fleshier part, the bonier part is going to direct that key down a little bit more efficiently or a little quicker, millisecond quicker, but it does make a difference as opposed to the flat part of the fingers. And both are useful. Just You just kind of have to use, use your ear. Uh, in different situations, and there are uh, different philosophies. Uh, uh, my understanding that you know there's this, you know, there was a, a flatter hand technique. You know, I, I, when I grew up, uh, I did go. I did actually go to a conservatory and study classical piano. And uh, I remember there was a teacher there at at Manhattan School of Music who used his only understanding. Of jazz piano was that jazz pianists played with flat fingers. I never quite understood that. There was some kind of stereotype that jazz pianists played with flat fingers, which was like admonished. You know, you had to have this perfectly curved hand. Well, I, I, I don't know. Um, but but um, if you if you want to practice scales, also another interesting way to practice is to always. To, to let's say play a key four times, hold it, and then play the next note while you're holding that previous note. And what you're doing is you're developing a connection. You're developing the ability to play legato and to stay, keep that weight down and stay in the key. And I'm, I happen to be at this moment just doing it mechanically. I'm repeating each note four times and holding it. You can hear that previous note. It takes a while before you get used to not lifting it out of the key. But you could take any kind of very uh, intricate line. A lot of these jazz lines, these uh, bebop lines especially, Charlie Parker lines, they're not very pianistic. They're not very nice in the hands, you know. It's, it's, it doesn't feel that great, a lot of parallel motion, but you can take each note and if I did that, I used to do that with classical pieces, with, with intricate Bach and Beethoven pieces, and if you take the time to do that, most people aren't willing to do that, but if you're willing to do the work that no one else, no one else is willing to do, um, those lines will just fall into your hands. Now, there's, you can take that exercise and bring it up a notch. So rather than just playing long notes, you can play dotted rhythm. See, and you'll, you will be practicing this quick, this quick muscle group. I call that practicing in slow motion. So what you're doing is you're, you're getting, you're having your cake and you're eating it too, in a sense. You're practicing these quick motions that you need in fast practice, in, in fast playing, but you're also allowing yourself to digest, listen to the note, and relax your muscles in between. So imagine. Uh, you know, they all take taking each frame of the film and kind of, kind of uh, uh, stop motion photography in a way. But this now the, suppose the line is supposed to be that. All right, uh, you can practice with four repetitions and three repetitions. One, two, three. Right, two, then two repetitions. 
then finally one repetition. And I could I could do a rubato too. I could wait in the key. And then eventually my 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 hand will just do that. Now th there's another element of that, okay? Uh, typically when one plays quickly, you're not going to be playing usually that deep into the key. It's possible to do that. It can be very tiring. And so playing a little more superficially, a little more superficially is a little easier than trying to really dig in with all of those fingers. It's a different sound, you know, but you'll, if you do it enough, you'll probably tire out and beat up your hand. Uh, you you want to play just to that point of what some people call it a tone spot, let's say, but not all the way down, not all the way up. If you go all the way up, right, there's no sound. And if you go all the way down, that's too far. Just where that key excites uh, the hammer, and and you can you can you can repeat that without letting the damper seat back onto the string again. Uh, now you could take any of those exercises. For instance, your your basic your basic two five ones, right? You know, you got your basic two five ones. And then eventually you'll be playing. Well, now I'm using five, five, five. You could do that. That's possible. Uh, I could play four and switch to five also, and slide the thumb, play in the side of the thumb, and kind of snake in there. Depending on, but or staccato. That's sort of a basic two five one that has a practical value in that those are typically the chords you're going to be playing if you're playing jazz, right? Improvising. I remember um, reading some notation uh, that Gershwin had written in uh, one of his scores, and he was talking about how he thought jazz piano players played with a detached touch. And there is a certain amount of detachment that we kind of jazz benefits from. I mean, these are all kind of detached sounds. I'm playing kind of superficially. I'm not really playing with a deep legato. There's a different, it's a different sound. It's almost like pedaling with my hand, but, but it, it becomes a little more tiring. It's hard to do those. It's hard to do that and really get down to the bottom of the key. So, um, I mean, that's all kind of superficial. But it's kind of pulling with the fingers and, and or, or potentially pushing. You could kind of toss the fingers away, toss, tossing the fingers all of that is sort of pushing away. And it should also sound like that. It should kind of sound all sort of even, ideally. You know, the, the ideal is, well, <laughs> you don't want to be able to tell the difference between this and this. Close, close, okay. So my point about technique is that it's hard to teach technique without having a sense of how you want something to sound. Do you want the notes connected or separated? Do you want a superficial sound? Do you want a, a, a more substantive sound? But playing a little game, this is more of an idealized kind of kind of sound. Impossible to do that with an intricate passage, but you know, you can you, you can make your best effort and and do that. Or like a blues scale. Uh, uh, sounds a little nicer. You know, if you have a sense of how you want things to feel, two note slurs, uh, five four, another great exercise. Um, just did five four. I could do uh, th uh, five four, five four, five four. Or I could do three uh, four three or three two. Or two one, right? 
So kind of like a ball bouncing, drop, lift, long, short, classic kind of two note slur, long, short. Having, so having not just the fingering, right, in, the, in your back pocket, but also having the phrasing in your back pocket. So you have two note slurs, three note slurs, or four note slurs, any of those, or parallel, going back and forth. You hear, hear a lot of those types of things in, you know, Beethoven sonatas. Getting that, those, that kind of uh, adjacent fingers is, is tricky. Sometimes it's nicer to use the, the, the forearm when you do that. Uh, but again, low wrist, low forearm, good posture, by the way, thing I'm really working on my whole life, getting those shoulders down and back, getting the shoulders down like your shoulders are in your, your shoulder blades, they say, should be like in your back pocket, okay? And your chin in and, uh, you know, all of that just like nicely aligned. That's taken years for me to really get good at. Um, and then, and then with all of this weight down, being able to just have the uh, freedom up with the fingers. This bridge, going back to the bridge for a second, the bridge is going to kind of feel a little like hard rubber, like you're playing through hard rubber. So your hand's never not going to be totally relaxed and flaccid. You can play that way. It's it's possible there are things you might want to do that with. You could certainly do like a nice like gasando. You could do these very superficial sounds. the WC arabesques, you have this very superficial, almost like you're peeling your hand off the, like you're peeling your hand off the, I'm hardly doing anything when I do that. I'm just really just placing my hand on the piano and just sort of vibrating almost. A little bit of firmness in the fingers, not a lot of activity with the fingers. Uh, that's not my go-to sound. My go my my go-to sound has more articulation with the fingers. You know, like kind of like that. Um, but uh, technique's kind of a you know um, a tricky area to talk about again because uh, it, you can only talk in general terms so much, and then you have to just really take a piece of music out. And of course, the problem with piano technique is that it's a bottomless pit, right? Because you have three, four hundred years of composition. And even if you spend a lot of time with one composer and you're really good at playing Chopin, or you have a feeling for Bach, I mean, even within those composers, there's going to be, uh, you know, one piece is not necessarily going to translate to the next, you know. But if you have these little exercises, again, like taking any, any little involved figure and just repeating the note, mechanically, uh, sometimes just actually repeating, you notice I'm, I'm replacing one finger, um, I'm replacing one finger, I'm just playing a simple scale, I'm switching, I'm s switching silently, switching silently. The second one, the first one uh, is played with four, short, uh, oh actually, and then the second one's played with the pinky and it's held. Uh, and you can do that 3-4 four, or 4-3 four, or 3-2 I kind of call that kind of call that finger pedaling because <laughs> you're controlling the dampers whether you control the dampers with your feet or your fingers you're still controlling the dampers right just you're controlling the dampers much in a much more exacting manner and you know conversely when you practice I think it's really important to incorporate the pedal and pedal every note so I if I start I'll play one note I'll, st I, I'll start with the pedal down so the dampers are open and then the next note I'll play the damper will, will again will go up and down and clear the pedal and each note every single note now 
I'm going to play the pedal now in a way that I ordinarily wouldn't. I'm going to kind of clomp on the pedal so you can hear when my pedal goes up. Don't do that because it sounds ugly. But starting with the pedal down. You hear the, the little clunk, okay, but that's what's happening with, with my foot. Uh, and if you practice pedal, 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 pedal. Pedal, 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 pedal. Da 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 da. Right, very fine pedaling, just enough to raise those dampers up. Some people call that a flutter pedal. It's almost a flutter pedal. Flutter pedal is really not um, even tracking with the, every note per se. It's just sort of, it's just sort of vibrating above the dampers and you might be playing a gazzando and your and your pedaling is is kind of doing that just so you get a little patina of of sound but what that pedaling does is it forces you when you practice to listen uh, and i would say in general over pedaling in that sense is much better than under pedaling so we usually think of over pedaling as just holding the pedal down and having it ring out in a big mess okay that's not a great idea either i I would rather that you didn't pedal at all if that's how you're going to pedal. But a pe pedaling at a tempo that you can control, you know, why do we even use the pedal? We use the pedal primarily because it makes the piano sound beautiful. It makes, it brings out the overtones in, in, the, in the sound. Of course, it does connect notes. I could play a low note and lift my hand and connect it to that higher note or whatever it does. And again, some people call it the loud pedal because it does add a bit more sound if you have other strings vibrating sympathetically. Um, but it's it's really to get that nice, you know, it's instead of a dry sound, you know, instead of that. Now I, I can hold down the pedal all through that because it's the same, all those notes belong to the same chord. All the same chord all the same chord, right? That sounds pretty good. So the other aspect of practicing these technical exercises, these finger exercises, is incorporating the pedal at some point. Um, equally as important. All right, well, what do you think? Uh, if you guys have any thoughts, please let me know. Uh, if you have any questions, if you um, need some advice for your own playing personally, you can call me and uh, we can try to arrange a lesson for you but um, I hope I've helped you a little bit and uh, I'll be on my way it looks like it's going to be a beautiful week in this beautiful summer weather we're having so uh, I'll let you guys go uh, again my name is Jonathan Eater this is the piano lesson and uh, great seeing you and we'll see you next time bye-bye <laughs>